Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. Let's get right into it. Thank you very much, Lex Mitch de Zook, I think, from the Netherlands. Hi to all my Netherlands uh, viewers. I don't know what it is with the uh, crocodile clip Dundee, but yes, this is uh, a crocodile Dundee knife. So let's crack it open and see what we've got. All right. Hang on. It's supposed to be vintage, but there's no vintage smell yet. Maybe the, uh, oh, we've got a card. We've got a manual. Got lots of uh, foam peanut things. Oh, what is this? <laughs> what? Oh, Sony Family Studio. Wow. What is it? It's a video editor console, but family studio did people like was this like a sony consumer thing that people could edit their own uh tape replay start here stop here it's very it's very consumery wow that's fascinating oh it's got a little pop-up hood wow so so uh, this uh, did this let you i mean it looks very late uh, probably early 90s maybe perhaps so yeah, there's no real... Yeah, that's not an 80s smell real. Like, there's hardly any smell to it. This is another family studio. Video sound effector. Wow, tape CD. So this is for... Yeah, this is like a consumer level audio and video editing system. Interesting. Who knew? Two minute teardown. Nothing else. A note! There we go! We got one! Sure enough, Lex found this in the attic, uh, video editing back in the day. Um, when that day was, we'll uh, find out. Anyway, um, uh, Lex has a YouTube uh, channel, Lennox Acid. Leno Lexon Acid. So I'll link that in down below. Um, I uh, hope your software is capable of decoding this message. I wrote this in a hurry. Oh, that's my software? Your software? Up here, the wetware. Hmm. Um, foam peanuts. Love crushing. Let's go. So we have the Sony Family Studio Video Editing Controller RME33F for those playing along at home. And comes with some advanced command mode stuff up here. And I don't know, is that sort of color like uh, faded? Um, yeah, I think it has. It looks like, yep, you can see where possibly it's like being in uh, shadow of uh, UV light and it's discolored stuff like that so anyway that's the bromine in the uh, plastic and we've got this uh, video sound effector as well so we can do various uh, sound effects oh look a cow Moo. woof Meow. and a gunshot <laughs> like oh my goodness and I was uh, pretty much on the money that it didn't smell 1980s copyright 1991 Sony Corp Ooh, and we've got everything but English. So, oh, was this a thing ever sold in English speaking countries? I'm, uh, I would assume it was, but uh, we certainly haven't got the manual for that. But oh man, no, early 1990s video and sound effect processing. <laughs> Terrific. And it still works. Listen to this. I'll plug in the external uh, mic slash. Let's plug in an external mic. Here it is. Here we go. Voice changer. No, let's try some echo. Echo. Check, check, check. One, two. Hello, world. Voice changer. Do I sound like Darth Vader? I'm not sure. Wait, no, until I edit this, but these sound effects. Oh, I can add that into there, can I? Brilliant. 
Oh, how crazy old school is this? Uh, designed for home mixing of your VHS tapes because it's a VCR input here. None of this uh, professional input rubbish. Oh, it's fancy, fancy, high quality. It's got S-video and then VCR output here. So you play from one VCR and then you can uh, insert all your video and edit uh, stuff and uh, video. Or in this case, this is uh, audio effects and things like that, you know, pew, pew. And uh, you can fade things and you can mix them between a tape and uh, stuff you can external mic so you can do voiceovers and and things like that to your you know your home wedding video or something like that so yeah like completely lossy you know you got to feed the output of the vcr into here into here and then re-record it analog style and yeah it's not it's not terrific. It's not digital like we have these days. And then, of course, we've got some video editing. Um, I won't demo the video editing here. It's uh, too long to set up. I've got to set up capture uh, devices. And uh, actually, where are the inputs on this? Um, hello? McFly? How does this one work? The other's got all the uh, requisite stuff, but this one doesn't have anything. Well, it's obviously designed to hook up to something. These are infrared windows by the looks of it. So what is this designed to hook up to? Wow, I have to try and get the manual for that. So, yeah, I don't think we can uh, try all this out. Anyway, two-minute teardown. All right, so let's pop this one open. It's got the old uh, the old Sony arrows on there for uh, taking out the screws. Now, I have actually done a full teardown of a professional rack mount Sony video editing uh, system. So I'll have to uh, remember to link that one in down below. But this is obviously a consumer thingamabob. There we go. Got the uh, tranny down there. Is that... What's... Oop. Why are they okay? They're just doing that to uh, ice. That's just an isolation plate, is it? Yeah, for the exposed mains wiring. That's kind of uh, it's kind of groovy. Don't mind that at all. And of course, this is classic uh, made in Japan. All the best stuffs made in Japan. Classic Sony uh, design and construction. Double sided load here. This is the bottom side, so it'll be a moon. We've got uh, Sony chips, which is exactly what we expected. Sony make a ton of custom uh, stuff themselves. They're one of the biggest. Uh, were one of the biggest. You know, they still make their own stuff. Um, anyway, yeah, typical Sony stuff. Got all their own branded chips. The amount of silicon different silicon uh, that they uh, churned out during the 80s and the 90s. It was just phenomenal. Um, you know, I'm not sure if it's the same pace these days, you know, as technology gets harder and harder and more expensive to spin uh, new chips and stuff. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, classic uh, silkscreen uh, stuff on the uh, bottom here. And it's like wave soldered on the bottom. Yep. Solder feed in. There you go. You can see that those ends of the pad there have got the larger solder fees. So when the um, solder wave comes across this, which direction does it go? Do we have a direction arrow? I'm not sure. Usually we have a direction arrow showing uh, uh, which way it goes in the solder bath. Anyway, when the solder bath bubbles over here, bubbles, 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 um, these ensure that uh, you don't get shorts across pins. It's just a... Um, you can see it on there as well. So, yep, I've mentioned that many, many times, but let's have a look at the top side. Well, that's interesting. On the top side here, these two main chips, upside down, all the electrons are going to fall out. Um, these are uh, oaky part. There's an M6422-49. Uh, uh, so are these like uh, specific sound effect chips or something, perhaps? Hmm, anyway, uh, classic single in line. Are they little uh, amplifier slash uh, transistor uh, arrays, stuff like, or... Um, uh, yeah, based on the uh, caps, they're doing uh, uh, some audio uh, amplification. Got ourselves some crusty uh, faders here, a couple of tactile switches and lots of caps, as you'd expect in uh, audio stuff. But that's about all she wrote. Not a huge amount up here. We've got some uh, regulation using some uh, discrete trannies there by the looks of it um, and some bridge rectifiers. But uh, check it out. You can see the original color of the case here, this uh, gray, because uh, it had this uh, quick reference uh, card on the bottom and that just slid in there like that and that uh, <laughs> protected 
all of that from fading. And inside the other one is exactly what you'd expect having no video inputs at all. It's simply an infrared controller. And sure enough, we've got our two infrared LEDs over there. So it's hooking up to some other system. There's no mains. It's just a six volt DC plug pack in. And that's all she wrote. Oh, we've got another uh, infrared uh, receiver here. And well, that's like, that's it. There's nothing on the other side, really. It's boring as bat poo. Oops, somebody goofed. Look at that tiny little footprint there for a tiny cap. And they went, nope, we need a much bigger cap in there. How can we fit it? Oh, let's just bend it over and slastic it down. Thank you very much. Hmm, there we go. Um, but that's about all. Oh, LCD came off. Zebra strip. I'll keep that. Uh, zebra strips, uh, like hard to buy zebra strips just on their own. Worth uh, keeping these puppies, having a uh, drawer in your junk bin. Uh, just for those uh, zebra strips. Very nice. Anyway, uh, Mitsubishi. Yeah, Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. It's a Mitsubishi fest for all you Mitsubishi uh, fanboys out there. But it's basically a big glorified uh, TV remote control. That's uh, pretty much all it is. Hmm. Oh, by the way, if you want one of these t-shirts, then I've actually uh, re-enabled the Teespring uh, campaign so you can order the negative feedback t-shirt, the triple five timer t-shirt. Haven't had that one available for a while and the uh, warranty void if not removed t-shirt as well. Link down below. Anyway, next up, hi to all my Swiss viewers. This one's from Adrian Rido. Rado, thank you very much. And uh, I believe this one is a present. Hang on. Uh, oh, what's going on here? Hmm. Okay, let's have a look. Ah. Foam. Ooh. <laughs> Foam. And photo taken in Switzerland. Ah, uh, salute, Dave. Salute. <laughs> First of all, thank you to the... I know it's not. Salute. Anyway, um, we send you uh, two t-shirts. Thank you very much in different uh, sizes. I'm generally a small or a medium size uh, t-shirt. Uh, and we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you very much. Um, from Adrian, Michael, uh, Gion, Gion, uh, Frank, who took the picture, Michael, Ahmed, Antoine, and, and Tony, uh, Oliver, and Julian. Not in the picture of Rido Networks in Switzerland. There you go. Thank you very much, guys. What's that white stuff? I do not understand. Um, yeah, oh. I love the anti-static, uh, sorry, static shielding bag. Um, oh. Oh. Oh, I'm liking this. Check this out. Look at it. It's done in um, the Akadaka style of uh, course. Uh, Tesla Edison. I, I don't know what the... Uh, Tesla versus Edison fight. It's a YouTube video. I'll link him down below. I'll have to check it out. But thank you very much. That is awesome. Wow. P powered by e3meter.com. Akadaka. ACDC. Get it? Hi to all my Chicagoans. Chicagoites in Chicago. I haven't been to Chicago, but thank you very much, Ryan Rawdon. Um, I'm not quite sure of the description of this thing. It's like, why... Um, I guess we'll find out. So let's have a bowl. And we have a note which might explain what we've actually got here. And if I can do a two minute teardown, I, oh yeah, probably could. Anyway, what they are, I won't show you up close, or will in a second. They're little uh, fiber adapters. So it looks like they're plug in fiber modules for. Uh, Cisco, one gigabit per second uh, SFP optical transceivers, um, up to 550 multi-mode fiber, um, and the other ones for 70 to 100 kilometer single mode fiber. Geez, that brings back memories. Um, working on uh, multi-mode fiber stuff. I worked on multi-mode fiber stuff for um, uh, seismic exploration uh, stuff. Of course, the multi-mode was good for short distance, um, like, you know, hundreds of meters like this, 550 meters, but single mode uh, fibers were used for like the long distance telecommunication, uh, you know, underwater links and uh, stuff like that. So cool, two minute teardown, hopefully. I think we can pry these open. Hmm.
And here's the multi-mode uh, module for those playing along at home. Let's take a look inside this. It's only a class one uh, laser, so don't get all excited. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. Uh, really interesting. We're going to have a uh, laser diode and then a photo diode uh, over here for receiver. So one's transmit, so we're going to have a laser diode uh, driver. I'm not sure which one's what. Laser diode driver and photo diode uh, transceiver. Curiously, they look very similar have a look at that but this is rather interesting what's are these used to join it like they're look it's you know I, like off the board there but it almost looks like that's a chip i'm gonna have to read the part numbers off that is that just a pass through or does it do something else as well anyway that's uh really interesting there's not much in it of course these just plug into the uh cisco uh, you know, uh, routery uh, type things, and this is like a thousand base T, um, you know, Ethernet type R fiber module. But that's all she wrote in them. There's not much, but I'll link in the data sheet down below. And there's your two chippies for those playing along at home as well. Hi to all my Canadian viewers. Um, this one is from Person Unknown, but I think I might know who it's actually from. Possibly a fellow YouTuber you may know. Um, so let's, because uh, there's not many Canadian YouTubers in our field, is there? Anyway, um, he did say he would send this to me, and this is ridiculous. Oh, actually, it's quite, de uh, well, is it delicate? No. It's, anyway, it is from, ta-da, doesn't have his contact details on it. Nerd Rage with a U. Thank you very much. Uh, link in Nerd Rage's channel down below. And um, he did this awesome video on uh, tritium powered, uh, or a, a tritium power source that would last for like 50 years or something or whatever the half life of uh, tritium is and stuff like that. And here it is. This is the one and only prototype that he made that was in his uh, video and it uses these little tritium vial. Go watch the video, it's excellent. Uh, I'll link it in, well, probably like one of those YouTube card things somewhere here or pop up there, maybe around about there. Click that little info button on the card or whatever and it will pop up hopefully. Um, a tritium battery, you can buy these little tritium vials, they're like glow in the dark vials. Uh, you can buy them on eBay and Alibaba and AliExpress and all that sort of jazz um, really cheaply. And, of course, tritium will just give out constant life life for the life of the vial. Um, you know, what's the half-life of uh, tritium? Anyway, so he got to thinking, what if I coupled these to solar cells? So he put a solar, you know, a standard uh, amorphous, I think, because amorphous... Uh, solar panels are going to work better in low light. Uh, that's why you're, I don't have a solar power calculator here over there. No. Um, solar power calculators use amorphous silicon uh, solar cells because they're more efficient at really low power levels and stuff like that. Uh, you know, they're crap to put on your roof uh, for large scale energy production, uh, solar energy production, but they're better for uh, the solar cells like this. Anyway, he sent this to me, so I'm going to see what I can power with this puppy. He's, uh, he's already done extensive uh, characterization of this and got the uh, efficiency curve and the power curve and everything else. Um, so that's in his video. So very cool. Thank you very much, Nerd Rage. And uh, oh, I, we can see what we can power with this puppy. It's really interesting. It's only a tiny amount of power. It's microwatts. I think it's like like five microwatts or something like that. So you can power a calculator or something else with it, but not much else. But the interesting thing is the solar cells are actually looking at the light coming from the tritium. So you could power like a watch or something, real low power watch or a low power calculator or something like that. You can buy these commercially, but uh, this one is much, much uh, cheaper and it actually gives a higher output than the commercial one. I'm not sure if it's higher per unit volume, um, but yeah, you can make your own tritium nuclear battery, uh, basically, because it's the decay of uh, the tritium itself. What it does is that uh, the tritium emits and uh, there's a phosphor coating inside the tritium vials, inside the vials in here. There are sealed vial with tritium inside and that's what, uh, and they hit the uh, phosphor coating um, and that's what makes them glow. And of course, then you just, uh, like in this case, I believe they're green and green is uh, around about the optimum wavelength uh, for amorphous silicon 
efficiency. So you want the green, you can get them in different colors, buy them in different colors on eBay. But uh, it's really cool. I mean, it's, um, but the problem with this is if you compare it to like a CR, just a CR2032 battery, which is much smaller than this, um, that will basically at five or 10 microamps that this thing is going to give you out, that CR2032 will last the shelf life of the battery, so 10 years. So yeah, this might last 50 years or something like that if nothing goes uh, wrong with it, the solar cells don't deteriorate and stuff like that. But you know, yeah, I, just a regular off-the-shelf CR2032 battery can do the same thing in much less volume for at least 10 years. So, yeah, um, yeah, they might leak before that, but they're generally pretty good. I mean, or a silver oxide cell or whatever, you know, uh, long, uh, low power um, cell you want to use. So they're not very practical, but they're just cool. You know, the fact that you can get take these tritium vials and convert them with solar cells into power. I love it. Brilliant idea. And there it is. I'll have to do a separate video playing with this. I don't want to do it in the mailbag. I'll like, uh, you know, plug it into some various things and uh, power them up. But anyway, let's, I'm sure it still outputs a voltage. Let's try it. And sure enough, if we wrap it up in some alfoil, which we have to do, of course, because these are solar cells. So any light, residual light here in the lab, and you've got to have light to film this video, then uh, it's going to um, generate the voltage. But hey, trust me, like, you know, I put my hand over that and like put it dark, turn off lights, everything else. It's going to give me, uh, it's giving 1.65 volts out from one side of the uh, solar cell. The uh, solar cell on the other side is going to give out a uh, similar voltage because they're those round little uh, vials in there. But anyway, very cool. And of course, it's not going to give out much current at all. And actually, we can uh, measure that. Go over to microamps over here. It's generating a bugger all, like 0.6 microamps, uh, short circuit current. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not much, but hey, you can run a little flea powered modern arm uh, processor like a gecko from something like this. I'll show this in a future video. Stay tuned. So, there you have it. That is a nuclear battery using tritium as a power source. Yeah, I'll be it through uh, some fluorescence on the tubes and then a, a stock standard amorphous uh, solar cell, but meh, it's pretty cool. Oh yeah, look at that nuclear glow. Oh! Next up, hi to all my San Diegoian, San Diegoian viewers? No. San Diego, viewers from San Diego. Um, what do you call yourselves? I don't know. Um, and thank you very much, uh, Elliot uh, Buller, who sent this thing in. Let's have a look at what it is. We have a note with, in the Ziploc bag, for our protection, it's a key fob. It's an RF key fob uh, with an RFID um, card from Tiny Labs, um, linked in down, belab, um, down below, tinylabs.io. Uh, it's a device that um, Elliot created, and uh, it's funded via Kickstarter. It's called the Key C, Key Sci. Allows the user to clone nearly any RFID credential that operates at 125 kilohertz for building access control. I have RFID uh, control, 125 kilohertz for the EEV blog lab built in here. I'm going to test it out. Will it be able to clone my card? We'll find out. Awesome. All right, let's have a look at this puppy from Elliot from uh, Tiny Labs. I like the name, uh, Tiny Labs IO. Couldn't get tinylabs.com, I guess. Um, and this is a, a smart key fob for cloning these cards. So, you know, here's a, a blank one, but I've got these access to uh, both of my, both the lab and my uh, office as well. So I'm going to see if I can uh, clone this puppy. That only works on the 125 kilohertz cards, which is your traditional ones for your building access uh, control. Anyway, uses a, uh, a gecko, tiny gecko energy micro, you know. Anyway, Cortex M3 EFM32 uh, and uh, generates a 75 volts uh, LC tank circuit from the CR2032 and it you can program four individual buttons to clone these cards. Brilliant. All right, so let's give it a bow. I've got the instructions. Hold down a button for 10 seconds. Jeez, okay, okay. Red lead will start to blink uh, once per second. Where's the red lead? I assume we're going to see it somewhere after 10 seconds. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. What? 
So that was a big fat fail. Um, is the battery dead? I'll have to measure the thing. Anyway, there's our coil. Beautiful. How many uh, turns in that? Couple hundred turns. EFM Gecko and all the um, just the smarts in there and the battery. That's that's it. I like it. Sure enough, that battery was dead as a dodo. It measured absolutely nothing. Um, so I don't know. Let's uh, hold down a button. Not sure which way it's supposed to go. Is that the lead there? I didn't see it. Come on. Twiddle your thumbs. There we go. Okay, it's blinking. Put it on the tag. And it'll blink faster while it's reading the cr credentials from the card. I think it's blinking faster. And it should, uh, oh, red. Successful, you'll see the green lead for two seconds. Note, we saw a red lead. So it was not successful. Oh! There we go, blinking green. It works with my other card for the office. So it didn't work with this one. What? So yeah, maybe some sort of uh, compatibility mode. Why it could read one and not the other. That is a working card. I keep that in my wallet every day to access the lab. So um, anyway, we'll go try it on the uh, garbage room of my office. It read that key. So the neat thing about this is that you can actually palm this, you know, and if you had access to somebody's card, then you could, you know, secretly press a button and, oh yeah, I'm swiping the card or whatever, you know, if you're really good at palming uh, stuff and you could copy somebody's card by just holding it for 10 seconds or something like that without them realizing. So that's kind of, that's neat. All right, let's see if this works. Look, Ma, just a key fob. No. 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 It doesn't work. It does not work. What the? Hi to all my Swedish viewers. This one's from Gruffman Bill. Bill Gruffman, I think. I don't know. Is that a company name or is that a person's name? I'm not entirely uh, sure, but let's check it out. It wasn't sealed, it was just sort of like folded over. Oh, what do we got? We've got some sort of module thing. It's a magnet Marel. I, I have no idea what that module... Oh yeah, there's some connections on there. It looks very automotive. Um, Very automotive-like connection. Recently replaced this Telematics gateway on a 2011 Dodge Charger. There you go. Contains a pretty serious... Well, I won't spoil it. Um, <laughs> info from the service manual. Displaying information in the integrated center stack screen module. What the... Anyway, uh, Frederick Gruffman. Thank you very much. Frederick, two minutes. Tear down automotive stuff. Always interesting the automotive uh, stuff. They're built like a brick, the proverbial brick dunny, and um, they're you know real high quality construction. So let's check it out. And there we have it inside this uh, integrated center stack a screen controller module for a 2011 Dodge Charger. I'm not sure what type of uh, screen inside a Dodge Charger, but that's why it needs a big, beefy ARM uh, processor. It's probably maybe running some, you know, embedded Linux or something like that to display all the stuff on the center console. So we've got all sorts of power stuff around there. These would be top-notch uh, caps, everything else. So, um, and that's an interesting package. Look at that ST. It's a power. It's got some power tabs on there. So there's going to be a thermal pad on the bottom. That's obviously part of our uh, DC to DC uh, converter here. It's a dead giveaway by its proximity to these uh, inductors. It's just a big ass over engineered package. But that's um, all she wrote. Of course, you're going to have some uh, bypassing big BGA, however many, many hundreds of pins that is. So that's just a classic example of a real high quality automotive board there's no uh, conformal coding finish on that but you know it's real high quality uh a fiberglass and you know they're really well engineered and they're using top quality parts everything else automotive stuff is very well designed and very expensive for a reason hi to all my canadian viewers in particular ryan Auclair, if i'm pronouncing that correctly from uh timmins in ontario in canada Love Canada. Geez, that'd be a bit chilly this time of year, wouldn't it? Ontario, Canada. It's summer here in Sydney, if you didn't know. Um, which is fantastic. So, let's... I Got another button. Oh, hang on. 
protective tab. at once. Oh, it's to add to my collection of buttons. Um, oh, that's heavy. What's this? Oh, it's a it's a Blackberry tablet. I didn't know Blackberry made tablets. Um, I wasn't into the whole Blackberry thing. But uh, that looks... No, it's not broken. It's a Blackberry tablet. Does it work? It's a Blackberry Playbook tablet. Uh, this came around about the same time as the iPad. If you recall, it was given to I had a high hopes for it, but it was lacking. It was Canadian. Canadian designed, was it? Um, I assume not Canadian manufactured, uh, possibly. Um, but it was lacking a few ways, such as poor Wi-Fi, uh, lack of apps and stuff like that. Okay. Interesting. Maybe two-minute teardown, or it looks... Oh, no. No, it's not over-molded. It's got a little thing, but yeah, we'll have to, you know, open it up like any other uh, tablet, sort of prise it open. So did anyone have one of these things? Let us know in the comments. Anyone still using the Blackberry Playbook? Sorry for the reflective screen. This, I hate doing uh, videos for uh, these sort of real reflective screens like this. You know, you've got to have a proper studio set up to do it. Hi! And we're in like Flynn. Uh, that wasn't too hard. The back just uh, prized off there. We've got a you know, little antenna there. Oh, yep, a couple of little antennas there. And uh, we've got our battery straight up. All of our processing is going to be under here. Uh, looks like it's under a metal shielded can. I believe it's like a TI, TI uh, OMAP uh, processor. Nice little uh, screws holding and board holding down the uh, uh, ribbon to board interconnect for the battery there 20 uh, 20 odd watt hours um this is interesting why have we got a second it looks like a second battery here but what there's a peek under the hood there's our uh, omap processor the Elpida uh chip there that's actually got the integrated uh memory and uh the processor built into one but there's another 16 gig uh sand disk one here um i've got some power management around there you can tell it's power management because of all the uh all the inductors around the outside there, dead giveaway, but that's about all she wrote. So yeah, that actually looks like a two-part battery in here. If you get the uh, board, I'm not sure if you can see that. I won't take the whole thing apart. This is only a mailbag uh, teardown, but uh, yeah, we've got some uh, protection circuitry under there. And also under there as well, but you might be able to see a little ribbon with some power traces coming out. That's going to sneak over to this side here. So they're basically um, like paralleling those two batteries up, and I guess that counts. I'm not sure if it's two, two twenty watt hour batteries or uh, or that's just the total spread between the two. But that's interesting how they've got the main processor board in the middle of that. Fascinating. Hmm. I love this recycle. Um, does anyone recycle their old? lithium-ion batteries in stuff which are in practically every disposable gadget these days i don't think so it's a real shame hmm thank you very much christopher neymol neymola anyway hi to all my german viewers he's from deutschland um doesn't oh didn't say where oh, i think i scribbled it out with my pen anyway uh let's open this puppy up let's open up from the bottom let's be a bit rebel like and tongue angle's important. All right, let's see if all the electrons are going to fall out. Oh, oh, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Oops. Wow. Oops. Hang on. This looks sus, doesn't it? Um, they're out of order. I'll put them back. They're actually um, surface mount resistor. Vials. It's a surface mount resistor kit. Um, I'm going to assume that that's kind of like laser cut. Um, Ucshop.de.deutsch. Um, I'm assuming that they make it. That's kind of cool. I like that. It looks kind of very laboratory like with the uh, vials. And these are various resistors. And then you've got other ones over here, which have got two. Tw oh, sorry. Um, yeah, they'd be ours. Um, oh, it's got zero ohm jumper links because you've got to have zero ohm jumper links. That's really kind of cool. <laughs> I don't, it takes up a lot of space, but um, that just looks very laboratory-like. 
So I'm going to assume... Oh! Ah, uh, cool! Sagan's going to love these. Thank you very much, Lego City. Lego City. Terrific. And, oh, uh, vintage. Vintage. Hold on to your hats. Vintage 4-banger. A Santron Bio Later. Oh! I think we've got some biorhythm action. Biorhythm action. Look at that. Biorhythms were <laughs> the thing in probably what the early 80s or something like that. Um, so I think this is a ca uh, this is actually a dedicated calculator for your but yeah a date button and for your biorhythms. Oh my goodness, what a shocker. Oh man, yeah, biorhythm. Does anyone still do biorhythms anymore? I mean, geez. Oh, we got the original manual and everything for it. Wow, there you go. <laughs> Beautiful. What else have we got? Oh, chocolate, thank you very much. Oh, Edel Volmilch. Oh, a Ritter. It's a Ritter chocolate. Awesome. And more vials, more vials. Oh, okay. This comes from DigiKey. So are these, are you, can you get the vials from DigiKey? Oh, no, sorry, they're just empty vials. Okay, I didn't know you could get these empty vials. Oh, sorry, no, it's not. No, it's just a wireless starter kit. It's a bag for something else containing all empty vials, so you can put your own. Um, oh, and little um, gummy bear type things. Very eclectic mix. What on earth is that? Hang on. Play the wobble board. No, I'm not Rolf Harris. Yes, Christopher does a kit, so I'll link to uh, uh, this, his website uh, down below for this. The other thing is a t he also does this um, in tiny grill. Uh, it's a prototype. Oh, no, no, I think he does do it. Edges are very sharp. Ooh. Yeah, no kidding. Um, it's a small insert for regular coal barbecues. You fill it up with coal, light it, and start grilling fast. Ah, it's an insert. Interesting. I'll link it down below. Maybe I can try it on the Barbie this Christmas. So there it is. That's a cool way to hold. <laughs> I mean, it just it looks very laboratory-like. There's the uh, little uh, chip resistors down in there. And you can have chip caps and chip inductors or whatever. And that's at uh, uc ucshop.de. Linked down below. It's kind of, sort of, neat. I like it. This thing has got what the written all over it. I mean, like uh, the Centron Bio... It's a Biolator. Um, like, <laughs> it's a basic... It's a real crappy four-banger uh, calculator. But you can, I don't know, can you change modes? What the hell's going on there? Anyway, you can enter dates. Is it? I'm not sure what's the story there. Um, yeah, anyway, it does sort of work as a uh, four-banger calculator, but oh my goodness. Oh, we got the original manual. Uh, not in English, so if anyone wants to uh, <laughs> translate this, go ahead. And, yeah, let's hang on. Where's the interesting stuff? Let's get into the biorhythms. Here we go. <laughs> it's just, no, no, no. Why did, does anyone still do biorhythms these days? Come on. I mean, it, it's like, it's not even worth opening. There's no magic fool in there. All right, you know I had to open it just to play with the nipple. Oh yeah, love the nipple. So that's the last mailbag for 2016. Thanks to everyone who sent in stuff. It's been awesome. And if you like mailbag, please give it a big thumbs up. I'm sure it'll be back next year. And everyone have a happy Christmas and New Year's. I'll catch you on the other side, but I still got a couple of more videos to come, I think. I haven't shot them yet, but yeah, you know. I don't take a break. I live a sad life. Catch you next time.